So today what we're working on, everybody, is the the way it's advertised is why should I pay a buyer's commission? But really what we're going to be working on essentially is if somebody said, why should I buy a home with you? Meaning, why should you represent me in a sale, right? Why should I work with you? So for those of you who don't know who I am, I've got like five cameras on. That's killing me. Hopefully a few more of you will turn your cameras on as we start working together. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Dale Archdeacon. I'm the founder of Smart Sales Coaching. For the seven people who do have their cameras on, if you've done training with me before, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, good. So we got some new folks on. Excellent. Uh, what we do is we specialize in scripting and dialogue training for real estate agents, inside sales agents, as well as teams and brokerages. So we help agents, salespeople, have better conversations, book more appointments, get more closings by actually working on sales skills. Uh, and so I'm going to show you our website where you can go check out more info if you want to know about us. And also uh, part of today, um, when we get done talking here, we're going to talk about a skill assessment that we do, essentially where I'm going to be getting feedback from you guys. It's something that we're rolling out now, which says, hey, uh, there's four core areas of skills that salespeople really need to work on. And the premise is that you can jump onto a call with one of our trainers for 20 minutes. We'll test out those four core areas and give you immediate feedback that you can implement now. And so we're running as a beta test and I'm going to ask you guys for some feedback at the end of this. Uh, so if you're willing to help with that, that's fantastic. But you can find more information about us at smartsalescoaching.com. Uh, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching, live, you know, training and coaching like this via Zoom. And uh, for our clients, we teach two classes in addition to doing live training like this and accountability, sales coaching, business coaching. We also teach twice daily classes for our clients who can access those. And we always have two weeks published that you can see the topics on our website there. Okay, let me go over here. So my screen turns green now. If I share, oh, no, that's not the right button. There we go. Okay. When I share my screen, if I pick a window, it like turns green and I can't see anything else. Uh, all right. Let me bring this up and we'll get started today. I, I need to hear some feedback. Somebody unmute yourself. Tell me that you can hear me. I can hear you. There we go, George. Thank you. It's getting really lonely up here on stage, everybody, since I've only got six cameras on. But I'll get, I'm going to stop whining about people not having the camera on and I'm going to get to it. How does that sound, Charlene Mills? You want me to stop whining and get to it? <laughs> get to it. Okay. Good. Let me share my screen. So a big part of what we're talking about today is why should I buy a home with you, right? Why should I use a buyer's agent? Why should I not, and not just so much, why should I use a buyer's agent, but why should I work with you in particular? And this is something that we've been working on for a while. I'm assuming that most of you are in Canada. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That's usually what happens when no. we do. <laughs> Who's not in Canada? Are you lost, Charlene? No, I'm in Florida. Hey, that's fantastic. Well, the reason I said that is because Agent Locator is really big in Canada, which is where um, Otto started the company. And so a lot of times most clients uh, with who are on these webinars are in Canada. It's okay, Charlene. I'm in the U.S. too. Don't worry. You, you're welcome here. Uh, the point, the reason I'm making uh, that I'm bringing that up is because with so many Canadians typically on training with Agent Locator is that in the U.S. right now, I don't know if you guys heard about the lawsuits, the Sitzer Burnett trial, the, you know, the fact that uh, buyer agency is, is in the courts right now, uh, how buyer agents work, how the compensation works. If you haven't heard all of that, it is a very hot topic in the U.S. right now. And the way that buyer agency works, the way that it's disclosed, the way that it's um, structured, the way that buyer agents are compensated all of that is under scrutiny right now. So right now in the U.S., a very big push is to help buyer agents better articulate their value because one of the big pillars of how things are probably going to change in the future is really going to depend 
on the ability of a buyer's agent to be able to articulate what their value is and why they charge what they charge and what the services are that they provide. And historically, at least in the US, a lot of buyer agents have been pretty weak about being able to do that, right? They're just like, ah, I'm nice. And I have a MLS access uh, and I like houses. So let's work together, right? That's definitely not going to fly going forward. So a big part of what we're doing today is why should I buy a home with you? How do you articulate your value? So you can also think of why should I buy a home with you as why you instead of any other agent, right? Why can't I just do it myself, right? Why can't I just represent myself? Or why should I not use the listing agent? And you know, what's funny is I just had a, a guy give me a call yesterday. So we've been doing training for the Robert Slack team, uh, one of many companies that we work with down here. And the num they're the number four in the US and the number one in Florida. You've heard of them, Charlene, right? Robert Slack, real estate. Sure, you heard of them. Yeah, we do training for them. And uh, uh, one of their agents just called me yesterday and he said, hey, I'm trying to work on this FISBO, but there's like 9,000 other licensed agents down here. The, the competition's crazy. So this goes in line with that, right? Why you? Why you instead of anyone else? What makes you special? What do you bring to the table? What is the buyer going to get out of working with you that's special or an advantage? So you can think of it in, the, in terms of these questions. So what we're going to work on today is this concept of you creating an elevator pitch. And the importance of the elevator pitch is, and every one of you should have an elevator pitch. Every one of you should have a quick statement that you can pull out of your back pocket or your purse. If I said, why should I buy a house with you? In the absence of you getting to ask me any other questions or getting any other information from me, you should be able to answer that question and it should sound good. What do you think about that? Agreed? Do you want to make a statement that sounds good? Good. Then we're going to work on your overall val value proposition. Okay. And that's kind of a longer thing. This value proposition is what you'll use inside your marketing. You'll use it in your emails. You'll put it into your buyer packet, into your buyer presentation. If you use one, um, you'll use it for social posts. It will also help you build out. So you've got your quick elevator pitch, but your value proposition is just a longer, more um, robust methodology that you can have to be able to address the very different needs that buyers have or wants that buyers have. And then we're also going to work on why not the listing agent. So we're going to just talk about a process for when you run into people who want to just go straight to the listing agent and how you can deal with that. Good? Okay. What do you think, Sharon Saunders? You look pensive. I think the word is pensive. I was just thinking about how they can't go straight to the listing agency because of listing agent because of dual agency, but that's just things I got going on in the back of my head. So yeah. Oh, yeah. we'll definitely get to that. Thank you. Excellent. Glad you're working on it in the noodle up there. So why should I buy a home with you? Uh couple of elements that you want to bake into this. So obviously these are just a couple of things that buyers want. They want to save money. They want to save time. They want to have the likelihood of success. They want to avoid issues and they want to alleviate fears. I see you guys fiercely writing these down. It's probably easier if you just take a screenshot with your phone and we'll be sending the slides out with the replay of the video in case you don't get it. Uh, but Save money, save time, likelihood of success, avoid issues, and alleviate fears. So when you're crafting a quick elevator pitch or an elevator statement, you want to be able to get a few of these in there. And what I want you to be able to do, especially with that elevator statement or elevator pitch, imagine this. Imagine if you were, you know, let's say you're you're doing an open house, right? And you've got some people through and uh, a couple that looks really promising, you know, somebody that you feel like you'd want to capture, but you, you're in the middle of a conversation with somebody else. And as they're leaving, they say, oh, hey, we have an agent, but thank you very much, right? Now, if you wanted a shot in hell at capturing their business, that elevator pitch would be the thing you say back to them, right? Why should they consider you? What advantages do you present? What uh, what benefit is there? What 
why would they want to consider talking to you? You can also put it in a context of this. Let's say that you are you're calling leads on the phone, right? You're you're doing some lead gen, you're prospecting, and you run across somebody who you're speaking to them on the phone, and they say, hey, you know, listen, I appreciate the call, but we're all taken care of. Uh, we, we don't need any help, right? And they're going to hang up on you. What is it that you would say back to them? That's your elevator pitch, right? Why should they stay on that phone with you? Why should they hear you out? What will they be missing out on? What advantages will they be missing out on if they don't continue talking to you? That is how you can think of an elevator pitch. Okay, so we've got several elements that we can bake into an elevator pitch, and I'm just going to show you a few examples of them, and then I'm going to show you a format that we can use to articulate your value prop or your elevator pitch just to get started. But first, let me ask this. Let me get this out of the way. Is there anybody on here who, and this is also for the benefit of the group, are, is there anyone on here who has been working with buyers for a long time or been in the business for a while and you have your elevator pitch and you feel really confident and comfortable about what you say? If someone said, why should I buy a home with you? George, I noticed you chatted that in. Is that still you? And would you like to share it with the crowd? Uh, yes. Good morning to all. Good afternoon. Basically, I have a company called Buyers Broker in short. And I exclu I'm exclusive with uh, mostly in the revenue properties, okay? But let's say we're talking about houses. Um, when I do approach a client, uh, depending on uh, if they approach me or I approach them, uh, basically we offer data, so uh, inventory data. So the time they're wasting time trying to find properties, we are in connect with the MLS system, uh, the CoStar data system, as well uh, in being recognized by thousands of real estate brokers in a local market. So when I do approach a client, they ask me always, why should we use you as a buyer's broker versus anybody else? I said, well, primarily, aside from the data that we offer and the research and knowing what's active, what's sold, what's expired, uh, our reputation in the market is that when we approach a listing broker or a salesperson, uh, uh, a seller of a home, they recognize that our buyers are pre-approved, they're serious, they won't play games with the inspections. So if there's other brokers or uh, uh, other uh, direct contacts, that listing broker, knowing my reputation, knowing our reputation in the market will take us more seriously, even though our price might be a little lower or at, at the asking price. So that has a lot of re relevance when we approach the, uh, the sellers. This building, showing to the potential buyer that our uh, uh, collaboration with the listing broker uh, has been established by uh, previous communication, previous transactions, or in the marketplace, where if you go direct, they're only considering the seller's uh, return and not yours. If you go direct, they're only considering, the, yeah, got it. Okay. All right. So George, here, here's what I would say. If I, so I appreciate you delivering that. I think there's a lot of good nuggets in there for everybody who's listening. I heard a lot of value propositions in there. I heard results in there. I'm going to ask you, let's pretend that we're in a real life situation and I want you to say about half of the words you just said, but I want you to still deliver the message that you had in there. Does that make sense? Yes. We're going to role play. So if I said, George, my wife and I want to buy a house, there's a million and one real estate agents we could work with. We can also go just straight to the listing agent ourselves. Why in the world should I use you and your company to buy my house? Two reasons. We specialize with buyers. And secondly, we know everything about that property, uh, its history, um, the real estate broker, and we will get the proper information from the sellers. Okay. So now, now that we cut it down too much, so what? You specialize in buyers, so what? What's the result to me? You know everything about the... Stop. Don't, you, don't say anything yet. You know everything about the property, so what? <laughs> right? I want you to think about that. So in your shorter pared down statements... We specialize in buyers so that you result or result, right? We know everything about that property so that we result, result. And actually, when we pared this down, you totally left out the fact that uh, listing agents prefer your buyers over other 
fire agents buyers because they know yours are pre-qualified, serious, blah 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 blah, right? Um, yes. So, uh, give me here's that. That's what I'm giving you as feedback for your elevator pitch. I need you to craft an elevator pitch that is a small paragraph that can be delivered very quickly that encapsulates the pieces that you said and doesn't leave them out. So the first one, way too long and windy. Second one, a little too short, didn't include the results that I'm going to get as the buyer. Good? So you want me to make one? Yeah, I have to create one right now, correct? Uh, you don't have to do it right now. I just <laughs> want to give you that feedback so that you yes, go. Excellent feedback. Yeah, thank That's you. Excellent. Thank you. And I appreciate you doing both of those versions for everybody who's listening who doesn't feel quite as confident or experienced in articulating their values. Because in the first one, if you sifted through it, George has a lot of good values in there. In the second one, it was a little too short and punchy. Um, you know, didn't quite have everything. Does anyone else have a statement that they want to drop before I show you a format for crafting an elevator pitch? Amin, how are you? Hey, Dale, how are you? Good. So, I mean, uh, if I said, yeah. why should I buy a house with you? You would say what? Yeah. So what I usually use for, you know, like when I'm on the call and I lead, I say, okay. Um, so right now, Dale, you're just getting access to the properties that are listed on the MLS to our website. However, uh, we also have exclusive listings in coming soon properties, off-market properties, which you currently don't have access to. Uh, you know, properties like private sales, bank-owned properties, distressed sales. Would you be interested in these type of properties? Yes. Okay. So then I continue, like, you know, I'll try to get them on a phone call or probably okay. a Zoom call. All right. So I heard access to off-market properties, right? Yeah. But to be honest with you, Dale, I'm starting to have some issues with this, you know, uh, kind of sentences because we now know that like there are less uh, exclusive listings and the time that a property can be you know uh, marketed as an exclusive listing or a coming soon properties is now shortened to only three days so okay. in ontario so basically i would love to hear from you what would be the other you know stuff that you could say to the buyers or the leads to actually have them uh convinced to meet you all right sounds good so let's get to that then. I let me. I'm going to jump back over here and start sharing my screen, and I'm going to talk you guys through how to craft a quick elevator pitch for yourself. So let me share. Okay, so we've got money, time, likelihood of success, avoid issues, alleviate fears. Right. Here's a quick statement for as an example. I help my buyer clients purchase the best possible home while saving them money, time, and avoiding common home buying issues that pop up during the process and after they move in. That's just a quick statement, right? Has a bunch of results in it. And again, you can take screenshots, but we will send out the slides. On average, our clients pay 15% less than market standard and spend half the time actively shopping to find that great deal. Now, if you are like, hold on a second, Dale, I'm in a market where uh, one house comes available for every 800 buyers, and it's literally like a, a shark feast trying to get in there. And they're lucky if they pay 100K over asking or 200K over asking. Well, then you could change this, right? So you make it whatever your stats are for your market. So what if that sounded like, hey, you know, um, working with us, we've won the last seven out of 10 competitive offer situations while still helping to make sure that our buyers didn't get taken advantage of uh, and didn't end up purchasing a lemon or whatever, right? I, I just flipped it around to whatever your statistics are. And I'm I'm saying that just to point out the fact that as you're operating, as you're helping buyers, as you're serving them, as you're achieving results for them, there is an evidence of success there, whatever it is, even, even in an, a fiercely competitive environment. Did you find somebody off market, uh, an off market property that wasn't there yet that only they got a shot at. Did you help massage the deal so that you could win for them? Because with everyone in a competitive market, every one house that sells produces lots of buyers that didn't get to purchase, right? Okay, here's another one. With my 15 years of negotiating experience, I've been able to win eight out of 10 of the last competitive offer situations to help secure the perfect home for my clients without them having to overpay for the property or accept poor terms. 
similar to what I just said, right? So those are just a couple of quick elevator pitches. And here I want to give you a formula. If you are not super, you know, if you're just getting started at this and you don't have an elevator pitch already, you can really just use this format. And it just sounds like I or we or my team or my broker or my office or whatever you want uh, with our knowledge or our experience or our process give you result, result, result. It's just a very simple format so that you can put your words together. Now, you don't have to say, I, you know, with my knowledge and my experience and my process, that's not the point. So let's say that it sounded like, uh, hey, George, you know, my team and I really pride ourselves on a buyer centric process that we've been able to execute for the last 250 buyers to the point that. They came out at the end of a transaction feeling like we were family, loving the process, and being overjoyed at the property they were able to get into for their family. I just made all of that up, right? But I'm just using this format to do it. Or, um, you know, George, I've been selling homes in this area for 30 years now. And at this point, I think that I've probably sold every home at least twice. I know all of these homes like the back of my hand. And so I am the person that can confidently guide you through your purchase process so that you don't make any of the common mistakes and you really end up where you want to be at the end of this by saving money and time and stress. You got it? I just made all that up, right, everybody? I just made all those fancy words up, okay? All I'm using is this format. And knowing that buyers want to save time, save money, reduce stress, avoid issues, right? Not get taken advantage of. So let's craft some elevator pitches for you. How does that sound? This is where the role play part comes in. Who wants to go first? George has already demonstrated. Amin, though. Amin has been resting on his off-market deals. Amin... Let's, yep. how about we don't use your off-market deals? Sure. Where, how do you help your clients save time, money, stress, or ang mental anguish, or whatever that you can make, that you can put into this quick elevator pitch format? Yeah, so uh, what I usually do is to try to meet with them online first. Uh, to, you know, uh, take down their criteria and understand what their needs and requirements are. And that's a perfect way to do that. We'll talk about it in a second. Now, let's say that I'm walking out the door of your open house and you don't have a shot at asking me any questions. You need to quickly elevator pitch me to catch my attention. I mean, why should I stop and listen to you about being my buyer agent? Well, our... Stats shows that, you know, uh, we can navigate the process at a uh, shorter, shorter pace comparing to our other, you know, buyers agents out there as we are technology based uh, agents and we can uh, simplify the process for you in a very um, short session to see what would be like the best. Uh, for you out there and, and you know, tailor the search for you uh, to get you the best possible outcome. Okay. Ooh, look at that, everybody. Good job, Amin. I could tell you were digging. You were trying to dig deep. You were, you were trying to get in there. Okay. Now let's do it. Now, usually the first time we put these together, when you just pull it out of your pocket, it's going to be rough. Everybody's going to be a little rough. I mean, let's do it again. Okay. Yep. You're at the open house. You're trying to hustle some business. My wife and I come through, we check it out. We're not really listening to you and we're about to walk out the door. Stop us in our tracks. Why should I listen to you about being my buyer agent? I mean. Yeah, Dell. so uh, what, what differentiate us from others is that like we uh, work specifically with buyers and uh, we, we, our team knows it's best to how to uh, narrow down the process uh, at the best uh, possible way to get your requirements. And uh, we do have uh, 
a database that can match your criteria, which you won't be able to find online. Oh. I don't know, I'm just trying to. We're, we're, we're working it out. It's okay. You're working on it. I want you to take that and I want you to continue to refine it. I want it a little sizzlier. Okay. I want it a little bit hotter, right? Take your criteria and get your results. Not sexy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody's dying to give their criteria and get some results. Uh, so think about it this way. Just try to sexy it up a little bit. Maybe we'll come back to you after a little while when you get to think about it. Uh, yeah. I see Sharon Saunders furiously writing. Are you ready? Maybe. Um, right. I'm walking so, out the door, Sharon. We're, I'm out of here. Why should I catch my attention? Why should I buy it? Why should I use you as my agent? Well, Dale, before you go, I'd really like an opportunity to win your business. I, I know this is straightforward. It's a very direct approach, um, but I'm keenly motivated to work with you as a potential client. You know, I, I have an access to a database of buyers and sellers that are just looking for the, for the type hold of hold on. hold on i'm just going to pause you there i'm going to pause you there because the very beginning uh the first three sentences all i heard was about you how you wanted my business how you wanted to talk to me don't start there i want to if i don't hear what's in it for me in the first two sentences i don't care anymore okay okay now let's do it again i'm walking out the door sharon why should i bother listening to you about being my buyer's agent I'm going to help you buy your house. <laughs> I, I just totally went blank there. That is the minimum expectation, right? Uh, yes. yes. I, I, want a, I, I, I want an opportunity to show you how I can work best for you. To do I know that's another I, I, I. Um, yeah. I I have moment, work... Could I have a moment of your time to, to discuss with you how we could work together to market your property. Or well, I'm, the buyer. I'm the buyer. Oh, you're the buyer. Okay. I'm not going to uh, market my property. Okay. So you're not marketing. What do uh, I want? Wait, what do I, I'm a buyer. What do I want? You want to, I'm going to, I'd like to show you how you could save time. Yes. Uh, in the buying process. I'd like to show you how you, um, how to navigate some potential pitfalls. Yes. And I would also like to, um, help you navigate those so that you can save money as well through the process. Yes, yeah. there we go. That's where we start, right? Now, okay. if you're like, Sharon, before you leave, I can save you money, save you time, and help you avoid buying an absolute money pit. Can I have three minutes of your time? Versus, hey, I'd like some of your time because I want to show you how much I deserve your business. You're like, what do you, okay, salesperson, beat it, yeah. right? No, yeah. you can't have my time. You can't show me anything. But if I start with, do hey, Sharon, you want a big bag of money? You're like, okay, what do I got to do to get the big bag of money? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just more attractive when you start with what I'm going to get out of it. Darren, can you add, uh, excuse me, can you add increase your chances of a likelihood or the conversion rate uh, the conversion when it comes to multiple uh, multiple offers or a multiple uh, interest in a property. Yes. Yeah. And so maybe I might say something like, Sharon, wait, before you go, this market is exceptionally competitive right now. And my buyers enjoy winning nine times out of 10, whereas most other buyer agents can't win in this competitive environment like I can. Can I show you what process I use to make that happen? I just made that up, everybody. You guys can make up the same stuff, I promise you, if you think about it and practice it. Okay, who's next? Charlene, you want to do an elevator pitch? Charlene's looking for the mute button. I want a buyer's agent who can find the mute button. There it is. All right, Charlene, I'm walking out the door. You want to catch my attention. Why should I stop and listen to you about, about, about being my buyer's agent? Before you go, I'd like to get better insight as to what you're nope. looking for. No, nope, you can't have any insights. I need to hear what's in it for me. Okay. Um, before you go, 
I know you've probably been looking for a while. I have in-depth experience in selling homes and I'd like to save you money and time. Would you be interested in sitting with me for a few more minutes? I like it, Charlene. I feel like we just started to rewire your brain a little bit. You're uh we're we're making new <laughs> pathways. <needs> <laughs> Yeah, in the in the how to quickly articulate a value proposition. I like it. Good job. Who else? Who wants to do a quick elevator pitch? Uh, is it how do I pronounce your first name, sir? Razul. Razul. Yeah. Can you Razil. hear me? Razul. There it is. Yeah, you can call me Afiz also if Razil is difficult. A lot of people address me Afiz as well. Yeah, Razil's good. I got it. I just could I couldn't tell whether I pronounced the I or the U. Okay, Raziel, uh, I'm walking out the door, man. Uh, why should I stop and listen to you about being my buyer's agent? Hey, do you want to say $5,000, guaranteed $5,000 on your next home purchase? I like it. All right, that's good. Now, let's uh, give a little more context or keep going, okay? You got to okay. keep going because only because, you know, like if I approached you on the street and I was like, hey, Raziel, would you like a big bag of money? You'd be like, I don't <laughs> believe your bullshit. I've seen that before, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not new in town. Uh, I know. Okay. I'm not following okay. for it. Okay. And I was just using that like quick, hey, punchy thing as an example. So let's do it for real. Uh, I okay. want you to capture my attention, but don't sound like a scam artist. Okay. Okay. Hey. Yeah. I so, can show you how you can save money on your next home purchase. And also I can get you all the tips where you can learn the nitty gritty of a realtor or professional can do. And also you can save time. So as a whole, you will really save time, money, and also you will avoid spending some costly mistakes if you allow me to help you. Okay, now, good stuff. If you think about this, do you know what this format says? So if I said to you, what you gave me, you just gave me the results. You said, I can give you these result, 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 right? Part of what this does is it lays out just enough of a story to be plausible, to be something that somebody could believe, okay? So I want you to listen to the difference here. Hey, complete stranger, I can save you money, I can save you time, and I can help you avoid costly mistakes versus Raziel, my team and I, have specialized for the last 20 years in shepherding buyers through the entire process in order to save them time and money and ultimately help them avoid any pitfalls that they may otherwise run into because they don't have the experience of buying a home yet, right? That is a bigger, it's a narrative, okay? So we went from just, hey, I can give you X, Y, Z to a bit bigger narrative, that makes it sound like just enough evidence where you're like, okay, I think I could believe this. Your, your, your short little story makes sense. I think I could believe you. Does that make sense, everybody? All right. So, Raziel, give me your little, make it make sense. Okay. Hey, uh, with my 10 years of experience of helping buyers, I can definitely save you thousands of dollars. I can also save you time. And also I can show you how you can really avoid making some costly mistakes where a lot of homeowners makes, which will really give you a very inclusive, uh, you know, things. And also if you allow me sometimes, I also can show you all these small things. And also I can allow you to have a visit of my uh, Google profile where you can see the, you know, uh, uh, endorsement from all my clients, buyers on that. Excellent. That's Good fine. job. Yes. Much more plausible story. Excellent. We're starting. I'm, I'm like running out of content. I'm running out of time here, everybody. We're just on the first step. Eric Glanzenberg. It looks like you wanted to give this a shot or had a question. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. Thank you, Raziel. Thanks for, thank you for playing the game, sir. Looks like Eric Glanzenberg is having trouble finding the mute button. Okay, everybody, this is just the elevator pitch. All right, this so being able to articulate your value, it's one of those four core 
skillless skills that I'm talking about that we do assessments around. So I want to move on because we're starting to run out of time and I want to get through the rest of the content here. This is an elevator pitch format. It gets you started. You can craft something around this so that you can use it really quickly. Then what I want you to do, once you have a quick elevator pitch, I want you to start gathering up evidence of success stories. Okay, stories are important. You, you're going to build and capture the stories that you have. When have you saved your buyer's money, right? When have you clearly helped them not overpay for a property or ended up, you know, being able to um, effectively negotiate for appliances or negotiate condition of property or helped, you know, identify something that a home inspector either overlooked or downplayed or something where you were, your, your expertise and experience really made a difference for your people in saving the money or winning the proper home or save them time, right? Stories of where you save them time. Have you worked with busy professionals, attorneys, physicians, people who just don't have a lot of time and you were able to cut that down for them and make the buying process much easier and streamlined for them according to their, you know, did you tailor it for them? Uh, where have you avoided costly or stressful issues or helped them do that? Where have you resolved conflicts with the seller or with the listing agent or even sometimes you know, keeping an antagonistic buyer away from an antagonistic seller so that, you know, both buyer and seller could end up where they wanted to be without killing each other. Where do you have any stories like that? Uh, have you resolved? Are there any specific stories where your buyers were afraid and their fear would have gotten in the way of them getting the perfect home and you helped them resolve it so that they could end up being happy and, and enjoying and loving the new home that you helped them get into? And where have you won competing offers? So I want you to capture these stories because they're going to go into your marketing. They're going to go into your posts. They're going to go into your marketing, into your emails, into your buyer packets, your seller packets. And they also help to inform those elevator pitches. You know, you could have several different elevator pitches that you can use in, in different situations. You just need one or two pitches. And then you have more long form stories like this that you can bake into your marketing. And then, you know, this is what um, Amin said. He said, you know, normally, and even Charlene was like, oh, hey, let me ask you a couple more questions. You know, you guys wanted to go to the questions, which is great. And that's the right way to sell, which is tell me what you're buying, right? What's most important to you about purchasing a home? What's most important to you about the experience of, of, of purchasing? What's most important to you about the agent you work with to buy a home, Right. What goal do you have in buying? What issues would you like to avoid when you uh, purchase your next home? Or what issues would you like to avoid in working with an agent? And what experience do you have in buying? Or what experience do you have working with an agent? All of these are fantastic questions and these are the right way to go around so that when you have these, when you have the answers to these questions and you've got all of these stories and you've got your elevator pitch, then you craft a custom close for these people, which you all intuitively know as salespeople, right? But sometimes you don't get a chance to ask these questions. So you need to have the skill set to be able to pull that stuff out of your pocket. Before we started this call and before I showed you that format and told you that you needed to know this, if I went around the room and I asked every one of you, why should I buy a house with you? 99 percent of you would have been stumped and it would have sounded terrible. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just being straightforward with you. You would have been stumped because this is not something that you focused on and it's not something you've practiced before. Now that you know about it and now that you have a format, you can craft something and you can practice it. And then you can embarrass me when I come back around sometime again in the future and say, why should I buy a house with you? And you sound awesome, right? My point is, this is the right way to go around. You ask those people what they want, what their perspective is, what they need, what their fears are, whatever it may be. Then you can craft a very great close for them based on what they want. But you also must be able to craft a close in the absence of getting information from them. Okay. This is my wife. 
she listened to one of a recording of me doing this and talking about value propositions. So she took her values and she put them into this, you know, that longer thing about telling stories and coming up with what her value propositions were and put it into this really beautiful piece that she can use to send out as a, a pre package out to a potential buyer or seller. Um, she posted this on social media, but she has this as an asset and can also articulate her value if you were to ask her why you should buy a house with her. So that's just the evidence. Now let's go, we're going to take a quick look at why not the listing agent. I'm going to show you a few steps and then I have a request for you. I want you guys to fill out a poll for me. Okay. So why not the listing agent? I'm going to go through this real quick. And this is something that we, we practice in my company among a bunch of other techniques and strategies. Uh, so when somebody says they're going to work with the listing agent, do not immediately disagree or argue with them. Do not immediately pitch buyer agency and don't get upset. Okay. Don't get upset. Don't take it personally. What you're going to do instead is you're going to ask them questions. You're going to find out from them what their perspective is. Have you worked directly with a listing agent before? What advantage is there to working with the listing agent? How will the listing agent get you a better deal or favorable terms? Or what's important to you about working with the listing agent? You need to unpack them. You need to understand how they're thinking first before you do anything else, okay? What do they think they're going to get out of it? Then these are just some good, powerful points that you can use once you've understood what they think they're going to get, okay? So when you need to make that transition in the conversation from pure discovery to leading and then closing, these are some good points that you can use. Listing agents work exclusively for the seller. Listing agents are incentivized to get you, the buyer, to pay more and negotiate less. The listing agents get paid more if there is no buyer agent. That definitely holds out for the US. I believe that holds out for Canada typically, right? Uh, listing agents are, and I like this one, listing agents are incentivized to get you to accept unfavorable terms and conditions of the property. And at best, this is what Sharon was talking about, about dual agency. At best, if you work with a listing agent, they'll be practicing dual agency, which means they cannot actively work in your best interest. They must be neutral. Okay, so these are some good talking points that you can use if you need to talk somebody out of working with the listing agent. So normally at this point, we would role play. I'll just deal with the listing agent, but we're running out of time and uh, we're going to have to end in a few minutes. So remember I talked about that skill assessment that we do where we jump on with a trainer, we test you in those four areas. So it's a beta program and I want to run a quick poll. I want to see from you guys, we're talking about uh, using the, uh, doing it, charging a, a nominal fee for the skill assessment where you jump on with a trainer and for 20 minutes, they run through your intro scripts, give you feedback, your objection handling approach, give you feedback, your value proposition, which is part of what we just worked on today, give you feedback, and then your ability to close a buyer appointment and close a seller appointment and give you feedback on that. So we're considering charging for that. And I want to get your opinion on this poll. Basically, I'm asking how much do you think would make sense if we charged for it. So I just dropped a poll. If you would be so kind, if you enjoyed the training today, please take a second to uh, make a choice on the poll. And uh, basically the price is from anywhere from free, that's ridiculous, I would never pay for it, up to 200 bucks for the poll or for the assessment. Can you guys see the poll? I see no answers to the poll yet. Is it for each assessment or for like the whole things mentioned here oh for so you see the four so the assessment consists of those four points okay so the assessment is you jump on to a 20 minute zoom you person you know one person with a professional trainer and they'll take you through these four key areas and give you act you know actionable feedback on it i cannot okay. are you guys answering these because i can't it's not showing me any results emily can you see if they're answering these yeah i can see it Oh, that's so frustrating. This happened to me before. Um, how many do we have answered so far out of 50? So far, we have 21 out of 50. 21 out of 50. Okay. All right, everybody. If you didn't answer it already, go there and answer the poll. I can't see what it is right now, and I can't see whether you're answering it right now. 
Tell me when we get to like 35. I will move on and I'll tell you the surprise ending. I'm going to do some giveaways. If we can get to at least 35 people answering this poll, I'll do a giveaway here. How does that sound? Emily, you tell me when we get to 35. We have 34 right now. 34. Oh my God. 35. That was Canadian dollars, right? These are, this is, uh, these are pounds, British pound sterling, actually. All right. Did we get to 35 yet? Yep. 37 now. Okay. I'm going to end the poll and share the results. How frustrating that I can't see it. That's so annoying. Uh, okay. I can't even see the results of the stupid poll. All right. Well, thank you for answering that. I can't see what the answers are. Uh, Emily, can you see the answers to the stupid poll? I can see it. That's what was weird. the, what was the most, what was the highest? So the highest is for $75. $75. Most people said 75. Th Listen, I really appreciate it, guys. I, I don't, we don't know what makes sense. And I appreciate you doing that. So I said, if we could get to 35, I would give you a, a, some freebies. And that freebie would be everybody here can get a free assessment with us before we start charging for it. We won't charge you anything. It's totally free. So I'm running a new poll. All you have to do is say, yes, please have a trainer reach out to me. Basically, what they'll do is they'll give you a Zoom link. You'll book a time to jump on a quick Zoom call. We'll run through exactly what I talked about. It's totally free. Um, actually, it's free if you bring a friend. How about that? Now, we don't have to do bring a friend. You can come yourself. It's free because I love all of you guys for being here and participating with me today. Uh, so let me know once you've answered that poll. Emily, where are we at on the answer of how many out of 48? 24. 25. 25. Okay. Well, I'm going to end this uh, in two minutes. I'm going to leave the poll up. If you want to do a free skill assessment with us, uh, no obligations. Uh, we aren't selling you anything. You don't have to pay anything for it. We're just going to give you actionable, useful feedback. Of course, if you want to do training with us, we'll tell you how you can, because that's what we do. We do training, um, but we don't have to hard sell you because we're awesome. And if we show up and do an amazing assessment with you, the ask is you either train with us or if you don't train with us, you tell somebody else about us. Is that is that fair, George? That's the ask, right? Good. Okay. So uh, any questions, uh, I'm going to leave the poll up. If you guys want to do a skill assessment, just let us know. Uh, we'll have somebody reach out to you, send you a link to get uh, scheduled. Otherwise, any questions about today's lesson or anywhere else that I can help you? Okay. Look at that. I guess I blew your wigs back. Well, thanks for joining me today. I'll be back again to do some more training for all of you guys. Uh, I don't know when the next date is, but we'll be back to do some more training for Agent Locator. Great to see everybody. Go out there and crush it. Thank you. Thank you.